It's now the point of the devlog where Sluglove is going to talk extensively about how annoying Unity can be sometimes. Also known as the button remapping. So button remapping, if you are unfamiliar with the process, is an option menu where you can change what one button does. For example, you can jump with A, you would go into the button remapping menu, you would press the jump button and then you would be able to press a new button that you would want to be able to jump with. For example, if you wanted to jump with the select button or the d-pad up button. You could then change the button input so you could easily jump with a different button. This is luckily quite simple to do with Unity if you are using the input action system and the rebind action UI that comes with the system, Unity already has pre-built examples of being able to rebind buttons, so I won't cover the basics of that because it's already in Unity. The complicated aspect is that this system that comes with the input rebind system does not have a logic for if you're pressing a button that is overlapping with another button. For example, if I wanted to remap dash to A, but a is already being used by the jump button, we wouldn't be able to do that, and it also doesn't have a system where we can swap the two buttons. For example, if I wanted to remap jump to B, but dash is using B, we will instead remap jump to B and dash to A. So we'll sort the two inputs around, which if you ask me is the easiest and most logical way you should have a rebinding system, especially when using a controller, but which I to understand it's quite a niche thing, I guess, if you want to do a rebind system and if you're using a mouse and keyboard, it's not necessarily important to ignore or swap multiple bindings because it's not as restricted on your buttons, you have a lot of keyboard buttons, but with a joystick you're very restricted on keyboard buttons and if I don't have a system to swap rebindings or cancel duplicate rebindings, it can have a lot of errors. For example, if you rebind down to up, you're going to not be able to move your control stick anymore because you will simultaneously be pressing down and up at the same time. Anyway, I will run over the changes I made to the input rebind scripting to being able to do this. Luckily, it wasn't too complicated. It did take me two weeks to figure out, and that wasn't because the system was inherently complicated or difficult to figure out how to do such a thing. It's because the documentation by Unity on the rebind system is bad. There isn't a lot of it, and the, in, the documentation I could find was written in a way that was very convoluted and very difficult to follow, and also didn't include the specific functions that I needed for it to include. In fact, my method for figuring out how to do such a thing was to first search for how to swap inputs, and when I couldn't find anything, I went through several YouTube videos on coding the rebind system just at a basic level without swapping inputs, and then searched through the comments section to see if there was anybody who possibly knew or had asked before about swapping the inputs, and when that didn't work, I found one specific comment that had a reference to an error in one scripting that vaguely mentioned an ability to swap rebind inputs, and using this comment I found, I made the system to rebind duplicate error inputs. So I'll just go over exactly how the rebind system works and all the additions that I have made, because it's really not a whole lot. When I first press the rebind button, I will keep a track of what the string, the input used to be. So for example, if the button used to be bound to the spacebar, I will just keep the string that reads keyboard dash spacebar, returning what the input button for this button used to be. Then when we have changed this button to a new button, as in, we have pressed a new input button, we want to change the binding of this button, we will check all of our current bindings, and we will check for any duplicate bindings. Again, very simple, there's lots of tutorials on how to do this, it's just running a function to check for if the action we are rebinding to is already being used. Once we have found any duplicate rebindings, I will use this scripting to return the duplicate rebinding. So this isn't a void function, it's a input binding function that is going to return any input bindings that are duplicates. Just one of those, hopefully. Next I will run a function to swap these two duplicate rebindings. What this function does it re is it resets the rebinding we have currently used, the one we tried to swap a binding to and enable the duplicate, to its default value because it was easier to reset it from a default value than the current value has already been set to. 
when using this function. I will then find the rebinding index of both these values. This is the button that we are going to rebind. So this might be a bit confusing, but a rebinding index is basically which button we are using. The reason it has an index is because it can use both a keyboard input and a joystick input. So for this example, most buttons either use a rebinding index of zero to accommodate for a keyboard or a rebinding index of one to accommodate for a joystick. The issue for this is if the input is a string of vector twos, so if it has an up, down, left, right input, and opposed to just one input, as in it's an axis, so the joystick axis, I'll have to search through all of these and find the rebinding index based on the joystick axis. The easiest way I've found to find this rebinding input index is just to search whatever the string is, and then if it has specific letters in specific places, I can reasonably deduce what the input is supposed to be as in what its rebinding index is supposed to be. So for example, if the 11th string letter is a K, I know it was originally a keyboard input, or if it was a J, I know it's a joystick input, and then if it has a vector two, I will know if the 20th input is W, S, A, or D, if it is up, down, left, right on the keyboard, or if it is U, D, L and R, it is up, down, left, right on a joystick, and then I can find the rebinding input based on this. This is probably a very convoluted and awkward way of finding it, but this is a convoluted and awkward system, so I don't particularly mind. And the only real issue is that when I make future inputs in the future, just to have this sort of basic way of coding the inputs in that the keyboard input always has to be first and the joystick input already has to be second, otherwise this function cannot return errors. Once I have found this rebinding index, I will just run a function to swap the two inputs. The function for then swapping these two actions is a function I'll repeat twice. This is action map find action input action, so either the first button we try to rebind or the duplicate button, then apply binding override. This would be the index and then the path that we want to have as our override button. The index is what we just found. The path is whatever the button is. So this is either the button we tried to remap to or the original button that I kept track of at the beginning of the scripting. Once I have done this, the button should swap. Should being the operative word. This took two weeks and had so many awkward errors to figure out and try to solve, but I'm very happy the rebound system now works. And you're looking at the timestamp, and you're thinking, boy howdy, Sluglove did really talk about rebinding for 8 minutes, and she's going to talk about it for even longer because the system had more awkward bugs in it, but luckily the rebind swapping inputs was the harder version of the scripting and anything else was just me being awkward with UI placements. But luckily, all it took was two awkward lines of coding and a couple lines to figure out binding indexes, and the real issue was because I didn't know what a binding index was and I had to figure it all out manually with debug return values, and it was all very awkward. All this to say, if you found this video trying to look for a YouTube tutorial on rebinding inputs in a way that will swap two inputs, firstly, I'm very sorry that my video is what came up because this is a devlog, not a tutorial, and secondly, now you know my pain that I had to go through suffer as I once did. Actually, if somebody is wanting to know how to rebind the system or code a system similar, just message me on Twitter, I will just give you the coding that I used. Finally, we will have the system for the remapping UI. I will either have the joystick remapping or the keyboard remapping on the left of the screen. This will then swap out if you have a joystick or a keyboard enabled and in use. So if we have a joystick plugged in, this will either be the joystick buttons, and if you unplug the joystick, this will switch to the keyboard buttons. This is very simple and easy to do. I just check if a device is active or inactive, and then turn a button on or off. The difficulty with this is twofold. First of all, menu navigation. I do all of the menu navigation automatically, and by automatically, I mean manually, because automatic UI Navigation, if you are using a keyboard, is messy and awkward, and on Unity can cause so many bugs, you would not even 
believe there are so many games and glitches I have seen from Unity games that have this one issue just because they use automatic menu navigation. For example, you could just navigate to a button that's off screen and not navigate away from it and have no options of how to close the UI or press any additional buttons and you'll be soft locked in a menu. Cough cough, yick, cough cough. So when enabling and disabling these buttons, I will also have to change the navigation options for any button that will navigate to the UI that is made for button remapping. Luckily, since I use my UI in one big screen because I don't really like option menu tabs, I just have to change a few buttons. And also since my game is very simple, there isn't a whole lot of options to go for. All I will have to do is I will have to check every button that will navigate to the option menu rebinding system, and then I will change any button that would remap to, an, to, a, to a rebind button to the alternate rebind button in the active rebind button. So for example, if it had navigated to keyboard left, it will now nav navigate to joystick left. Very, very simple. The second issue is if we have already selected a button that is in this rebind setting that is now being disabled. If that is the case, I will then have the first button of the new rebind setting that is being enabled also selected by the player. So we're not in a state where we are selecting a button that is inactive. And finally, if we are in the middle of rebinding a button, I will not enable or disable any button UIs until we have finished rebinding, just because the rebinding process is awkward and it's easier just to finish that and then switch the UI afterwards. End of devlog. Despite the 8 minutes of complaining about the rebinding system and how awkward it was to code for, I am very, very, very glad that the system now works. I think input rebinding is very useful. It's useful both for a game development because I can easily add a new controller that maybe Unity doesn't support as easily to the game because it can just register inputs. And I think it's very good for players because if a player is using an alternative controller, for example, a one-handed controller or a different type of joystick or maybe a fight pad, something like that, it means I can get away with not programming code to support those things because they can just press the inputs themselves in the rebind system. You see, this is a lot of work, but technically I'm actually just being lazy and I don't want to code the code for different input buttons. Hopefully the next devlog will be about actual gameplay. I know I've been diverting and doing a lot of UI videos recently and saving videos and very niche videos recently. But the reason for that is because I'm preparing to upload the demo for Papel very soon. And by soon, I mean in a few months. And the reason for that is that I need a lot of systems in place for this demo to actually work. For example, option menus, UI menus, save load systems, save files, things of this nature. And I have to take time to make those. It's also very interesting for me because these are systems that I've always neglected and put off working on in my prototype games. But Peppel is no longer a prototype. We're an alpha baby, so I need to code UI systems. Hopefully, this has been interesting. All seven of you that watched this far. <laughs>